Welcome to a special edition. It's me and my BSF. We talk ghosts, history, bears, trade center, Ouija board, guns. There is nothing off limits. Well, kind of. I did edit a little bit, but you have to stay tuned and tell me what you think about me and my best friend. Welcome to Empowering Time Markers, the podcast where we share inspiring stories, empower listeners with business tips, and create connections. I'm your host, Tia Bottom, and I'm thrilled to have you join us on this journey of growth and empowerment. Our guest today is a long life friend of mine, a doting mom, an amazing award winning writer that makes creative jewelry to help others express themselves. Her mom would share stories about living in a haunted house when she was a little girl, and she has been on the hunt ever since. Please welcome Jessica Schlafer. Hello. (laughs) Hello, my BFF. Hello, hey. Please tell me your ghost stories. So when I was probably, I would say, eight or nine years old, for Christmas, my grandmother gave us a Ouija board to my sister and I, because that's what you do. And we used to play with it all the time. I had my friend come home from school with me once, and we were playing with the Ouija board. And are you here? Is there anybody here? Show us a sign. And as we're playing with it, like weird things, like you, I'm sure we could count it to the house creaking or the house settling, but we were sure it was the coast. But we were like, show us a sign. And the dishes in the kitchen fell like the stacked dishes in the dish drainer. It was the 90s. We didn't have dishwashers. So the dishes in the dish drainer fell. We screamed and the Ouija board went flying. And we're like, but there's a ghost in here. And we all sat outside and waited for my parents to come because obviously there's a ghost in the house. That was like my first really introduction to like, there's obviously something happening here. There's ghosts in the world. There's something happening. So fast forward a few years, I went camping with some friends. We can't call it camping, but we were used stupid teenagers <laughs> and we, we brought the ouija board in the woods by this little creek and we we're playing with the ouija board and somebody show us a sign and to this day all of us are my two friends heather and kelly and then our friend matt and my sister because as the big sister you have to bring your little sister to everything because you're in the 90s you're the babysitter so dragging my sister along and she's really thrilled to be there of course as you know so we're all camping and it's getting dark and We have this little fire and playing with the Ouija board. And we're all taking, everybody's taking turns with me because I'm the vessel. I'm the one that the Ouija board talks to. And everybody's taking turns with me. And so we play with the Ouija board. And finally, we start hearing things off in the woods. And I need more details for a second. Uh, Just to tell everybody, I was not one of those friends. (laughs) But then I was terrified of Ouija boards. And my parents and grandparents were like, no, you can't get rid of it. Don't do that. Anyway. Side note, first of all, how old, how much younger is your sister than you that you're she's, dragging her to the spirit world? Yeah, she's woods. three years younger. Okay. And how old were you? At that time, I would say we were 15 because we couldn't drive. We had to have our parents drive us around at that time. Okay. And you said that you were the main vessel. So I saw everybody had to touch the board at the same time or the, what is it called? What's the the movie thing. The plane's also a little control, the control. Are you, I thought you weren't supposed to be the only one doing it. We only did it with two people at that time, at that point in time, because it gets really bulky when you have more than two people on it, okay. because it's like all those arms moving around and right. it just, bulky is really a good word to describe it because it's small. Yeah. It's small. It's a small space. And when you're in the woods, you're not like, you're not at a table and there's no chairs because again, we're 15 years old. It's not like we're bringing fold-up table and chairs into the woods. We barely brought a tent. Okay, so you and were camping? Farm. Yeah, we were camping. With well, your little and, sister? With my little sister. We The girls had a tent. Matt, he made his own tent. Okay, of course. Because he wasn't supposed to be there. Of course not. <laughs> and, so I know yeah. everybody involved in this because we grew up in a very small town. As you know, Kelly's parents were religious. And she, her, yeah. my parents and Heather's parents were like, you know, whatever. Kelly's parents were very religious. And if they had found out that Matt was there, it would have been, it would have been all over. Yeah. And so he brought his own tent and whenever we were camping pretty close to her house. So they came to check on us a couple of times. And when we'd hear them coming, he had to make a beeline out of there. Yeah. Was it fall time? What time of year was this? 
It was late spring, so it was warmish. Okay. Yeah. So it's upstate New York, so it's warmish means warm in in the the daytime, but cold at night. Yeah. Oh, okay. Continue. (laughs) You're at the board. We're at the board. I don't remember who I was playing with. We start hearing things out in the woods. And teenage rain contributes this to ghosts or and demons and haunted things. Adult brain, 45 years old now. This is probably an animal or a bear or a deer. But obviously, teenage 15-year-old girl is like, there's a demon in the woods and it's after us. So my brilliant self decides to say into the nether, we're not afraid of you. Come show yourself. We're not afraid. Show us who you are. As this is happening, the fire blasts up and the wind picks up. Of course, everybody's scared. Kelly's religious, so she starts praying. And we all go into the tent. And my sister's crying. And Matt was at that time. He he was bullied in school, if I remember correctly. So he's trying to be like a tough guy. And I'll protect you girls. Okay. Very chivalrous. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Oh, hold on. I have another question. Oh, so how how are you that brave? Like, you are one of these as one of my best friends forever i've known you my whole life very shy person around humans so <laughs> around human is this because there was a human you thought you think <laughs> i don't know what kind of okay well, the word will, possessed I, you i yeah. will add there were no drugs there was no alcohol okay. we were 15 years old I don't know what possessed me to think that I could say, we're not afraid of you. I think that I was showing off Uh in front of my friends that because I'm the one that the Ouija board talks to. I'm the only one that can be on the Ouija board. So I'm going to say, we're not afraid of you. Yeah, you're the leader. Yeah, I'm the leader. I'm the alpha. And then, and of course, so things start happening and we're in the tent now because everybody's scared. We can hear footsteps in the woods. So... You can tell the difference between like animal footsteps and like human footsteps in boots. So you can hear what sounds like boot footsteps in the woods. And that's what we hear. So everybody's at this point, like a panic. Oh my God, there's footsteps in the woods. And then something's like being thrown at the tent. And so shit, what have I done? <laughs> so the, my brilliant idea was we're going to get back on the Ouija board and say, we're, we, oops, never mind. My mistake. This but is pre Blair Witch Project. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank God, because you would have had a heart. <laughs> I totally made Blair Witch before Blair Witch happened, but we didn't have cameras. But, no cameras, um, no cell phones. No, okay, no cell phones. No. And no car. No pagers, no car. In the woods. Good times. Yeah, good times. And all because 15 year olds were really smart too. We had marshmallows. Yeah. Necessities, we, right? No. And marshmallows and a roll of toilet paper because we're girls. We thought ahead. We get on the Ouija board again. And I'm like, hey, remember that time I said that I wasn't scared? Yeah, I take that back. So I'm um, trying to backtrack. We're sorry that we've called you here. Trying to make it sound like this sincere. We're sorry that we've called you here. We're sorry that we don't, we didn't mean to, to summon you, whoever you are. And we're just dumb kids in the woods. We send you back to where you belong. And... So for a while, it was quiet. So we relax. And then it starts raining, but we can still hear these footsteps out in the woods. So it gets later and later. The footsteps seem like they're further away. So we go hanging out in the tent. Nothing's happening. So everybody starts going to sleep in the tent. And with the next morning, we wake up and there's like footsteps in a circle around the tent. And everybody who was on the outside of the tent, it's got like bruises from being kicked in their sleep. and Matt's tent is destroyed. It could have, it literally could have been a deer that like got into the tent and destroyed it. I don't know. Whatever. Because he, he taped like a sheet to a tree. <laughs> Sounds like Matt, right? His tent was destroyed. Everything like our bags were ripped open and everything was strewn about. Raccoon. Raccoon. It could have, it literally could have been anything. But there was a circle of footprints around our tent. And there were bruises on, I don't remember who slept on the outside of the, like on the edges of the tent, the corners of the tent. Right. The, but they had bruises from being kicked in their sleep. Yeah. It was really scary to wake up and like, we were like, okay, 
So that happened. Okay, so now looking back, this obviously affected you. You remember a lot of details. Yeah. Do you think it was a ghost, a demon, or an animal? I think that there was something there. Okay. I think that maybe there was something in the woods. I think that the bags and the tent, that was an animal. Okay. I think that maybe there was something there that was maybe not supposed to be there. But I don't know. I don't know what it was. Okay. Also, side note, the first story about the dishes, did anything else happen in that house? No. Nothing ever happened again. Okay. Because I was, was going to say, did the ghost follow your mom <laughs> from when she was growing up? I, that's funny that you should ask that because she, like, she had, like, a, her house was seriously haunted. Mm -hmm. And she, we've never had, any, in any of the houses that she's ever lived in since, nothing has ever happened except for that one incident in the house growing up where the dishes fell. We, she never had any sort of haunting, anything ever again. And, but, yeah, it's right. funny. I, me and you have a story. We didn't oh, discuss yeah. this beforehand, but... Mm -hmm. It was me, you, and Matt. He's always, he's always he's the him. one, man. He was it. We went up one of the mountains in a field, I remember, and we were looking at stars. Do you remember this? I think so. Like alien. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there was like a wolf or something. Something happened there. And it has been like, it's been stuck in my mind ever since of yeah. having a feeling of fear of doing that. And this old camp, right? I don't know. I really, <laughs> all I have is a memory of being in this field, looking out and looking for alien. Like we were like, oh my God, there's got to be an alien. And that's something with wolves. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And it was, yeah, just, and it's like something was like, you could feel something watching you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember that. I do remember that. Now you bring it up. So no, that, I, I got like, chills now. <laughs> so also random, were you in the, okay. You remember Heather's car? The, the convertible. I remember. I don't remember how this happened. I don't remember why I was there. We were on a dirt road and we stopped and there was something going on in the woods. And I don't remember anything after. I remember screaming and then like we made it back to town, but I don't remember what was going on. Yeah, it's, it'd be fun. I And Kelly too. Kelly was with, the, with us too. I wondered what she remembers. Because she's really into that occult kind of thing now, too. Okay. Yeah. Marie, funny with the dishes, she was in the sixth grade. So I was put into an enrichment program for, for the smart kids. Um, and we got to do like an individual study program. It's called gifted kids. <laughs> Whatever. Don't try to segregate yourself. <laughs> That's smarter than me. You're a gifted gifted whatever <laughs> i have a gifted kid i know right. one of those me too exactly yeah you live that so life. i was put in this gifted kids gifted program and we got to do individual study and i decided to study ghost spirits and hauntings this was in sixth grade you got to pick a partner to research with and i picked marie because she was my friend at the time and she didn't do a lot of the research with me but we got to present the program at the end of the year and we put out like a lot of the research that I did and like drawings and the research paper. And I did a little sculpture of a little ghosty and things like that. And got our picture in the paper and I dressed like in the black, like just as a, it's not, the term is out of date, but, and I can't, uh, gypsy is the term. That's an out of date term. I know that's not the right word. I can't think of the correct term. That's what I was dressed as. So I got my picture in the paper and they put that I was studying witchcraft in school. And so there was like a huge uproar that I was studying witchcraft in school. Was this the Daily Star or Daily? The well, reporter. The reporter. Okay. <laughs> to preface, this town is so small. It at its peak was like 5,000 people average. Yeah. We graduated together and mm -hmm. our class was about 100 people mm -hmm. just to give you when you're in the paper, I was on the front page because I was gardening in the front and it said, you know, it's springtime when Shirley and her granddaughter are in the garden in the front. That's how small of a town <laughs> this is when you're in the paper. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like. And everybody knows. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. And they were like, Jessica Schlafer studies witchcraft for the enrichment program. And I was like, my mom came home from work and she was like throwing the paper on the table and she was like and she called the paper 
paper and they had to print a retraction and an apology. Like she was actually studying ghost spirits and hauntings, not witchcraft. Just trying to picture your mom doing this. Okay. She was mad. And my mom, she's a lot like me where she doesn't get riled up over things. So for her to be like as mad as she was. was really a, Once you get labeled. Something yeah. Like that oh, in yeah. a small town. Like all of a sudden you're a prior. Oh, so yeah. yeah. She knew. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Like ever since that whole, that the, with the Ouija board when I was a kid with Marie, I've been really like this, been my interest, watch the shows on TV. And I'm not... I like horror movies, but not to the extent, like, my sister watches all the cheesy horror movies. She watched a movie called Slother House the other day about sloths killing people. Come on now. That's fitting. That's fitting for her, though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but I took my son, Adam, to Gettysburg this summer, and we did a ghost tour. And I didn't see them when I was tied. They encourage you to take a lot of pictures. And I was like, click, 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 and took all the pictures. And when I got home, I didn't see anything when I was there. And I didn't feel anything. It just was a really cool. It was mostly historical. Here's the historical landmarks. This is what this was. And Gettysburg is full of history, of course, from the battle. And it's a fascinating town. And it's a beautiful little town. And when, we, when I got home and I put the pictures, I posted the pictures on my Facebook. And my friend was like, did you not see these? And she sent me all the pictures that she zoomed in on her editing software. And I was like, holy crap, look at all these ghosts. I took all these pictures of all these ghosts and I didn't see a damn thing. Nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's just been, I, it's fascinating to me that there could be something out there. And I'm, it's just, to me, it's interesting and it, it makes me think that there could be, who knows what's out there. Yes. <gasps> so oh. now that you're 45, right? I'm yeah. going to blast you out. <laughs> Thanks. I'll be 46 next month. Yeah. Happy early birthday. Thank We're you. recording this in November. So your whole life, you've been super intrigued by all of this, all the ghosts and spirits and things. Mm -hmm. I find it super interesting. Have you had any recent, any kind of weird activities or? When I was in college, my sister came to visit me and I went to school in Oswego. And there's a Revolutionary War, Fort Ontario is an as, as we go. And we were driving my little 1991 Ford Escort standard with it's a five speed with one door that opened and you had to use pliers to open the other doors and you could take the key out while it was driving and you could turn it off while it was driving. It was really a junky car. And when I traded it in, I had to hand the man the VIN because the VIN had popped off. Yeah. And we were driving out. I took her out to see it one day. It's also really... It's the only place in the U.S. that they brought World War II Jews to refugees during World War II because there was housing there. It was, it's a really remarkable place. Anyway, we went out there, so I took her out there to see it when she came to visit me one time. And we were talking, and I looked over at her while I was driving, and we both looked up at the same time, and there's a whole field full of Revolutionary War soldiers standing there. And I said, let's get the hell out of here. And she said, yes, turn around, let's go. And that, that was, it was pretty cool and scary at the same time. And so we like, we were like, Bleh. that's not really recent because I graduated college in 01. Yeah. Is there any places you don't want to go or you want to go visit? So Adam and I, Adam's really into history. Adam's my son, as you know, but the, your listeners don't. He's really into history. He loves history. When we do vacations, he likes to go to historical places. And so when we do our next vacation, we're, he wants to go to another Civil War battlefield. So we were looking at Antietam, which I think we saw is in Maryland. So that's it's literally where, where I used to live. Okay. I drove by it all the time. Yeah, I think that's where we're going to go next okay. and check that out. So we got they to do, do Gettysburg. They do what? amazing fireworks for 4th of July. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. It's very tacked. Just I bet. <laughs> and I'd be like, no, I'll get me out of here. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you this. This didn't happen to me, but we're moving soon, right? The military nowadays, like this year, they allow you to see what jobs and positions and where you could go and you can put them in order. A few more just popped up. And one of them is Fort McNair, which is in D.C. Okay. I was doing research. Do I want to live there? What's going on? All the things. And 
it's one of the haunted bases, which they all are. I'll tell you that right now. But this one was specific to somebody that I did not know this in part of the history. Now, this was a YouTube video. I don't know. I didn't fact check it. But I know that you would find this interesting. So, okay. In the courtyard, it used to be called, it wasn't Fort McNair. It was called like artillery, something, whatever. But back when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, they had four other people conspire with him that I didn't know. And they held them there like prisoners while they were doing all the court stuff. And they were found guilty to were to be hanged and two had life imprisonment. The two to be hanged stayed there and they were building the gallows in the courtyard while they walked, like they could watch out the window. Oh my God. And they were hanged. It was a woman. Now, they say it's haunted because people have seen her. And in the wintertime, the path that she had to take is always melted snow. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Just something that maybe... Because it's up in that area. Yeah, yeah. Look look into that. I did not fact check. But that's an interesting story. One. Oh, yeah. Like conspirators. What was Conspirators? Conspirators. Whatever. People that that helped him. (laughs) Yeah. I just thought that was pretty interesting since it was in that area. And, yeah. I have ghost stories for days. I love ghost stories. I am so afraid to go to certain places. Because I am, I'm scared to feel the energy. Yeah. So yeah, if it's like a scary negative energy, I'm not interested. Yes. One. Two, I have such a sensitivity, especially since, um, well, forever. I've always had this. Yeah. But now I understand certain things in a different way since the near death stuff. Before I start this, you had come to help me while I was recovering um from the near death the last one when i talked to you during that time did it feel like you were talking to somebody that kind of knew the other side a little bit it doesn't you don't have to i'm just wondering if that i don't think so i just felt like it was my friend who was just tired okay even with the conversations we had i don't think so i'm just the same person no i just i feel like you were just tired yeah okay so on my perspective, I had an understanding of the other side. And yeah, I didn't have a lot of energy to talk about. I was very tired. So that is a true assessment. However, when I was close to dying a couple times, I figured out something about energy. Mm-hmm. So I don't have facts. This is just what my experience is. So you know how you have thoughts. And you can't touch them, but they're real. And like just just even now thinking, I have words in my head. And if you know anything about biology, so there's cells and most of it is just empty space, but it is energy. It's like the electronics and spinning and all the things. To me, all of that negative space, is it called negative space? The empty space, which is the, the majority of all of the universe is that space that you can't really see but there's something there that to me is the energy of your soul like ours is encapsulated into this human body right now and so when your human body no longer lives that negative space is still there that energy that was your soul like those things that is what i interpret our soul to be and that's why, like, when our body passes, I do believe, because I've felt people that yeah. pass, and you can feel, like, their energy is still there around you. And that's what I feel like you're feeling. Oh, wow. That energy and that vibration of that person. That's how I believe, like, when you dream, they come to you in your dreams because pass through, well, your that subconscious. Oh, wow. I very much highly believe in spirituality and souls and all of that. And I had all of that being said, the reason why I don't want to go to these places, I have a fear of going to these places because I'm very in tune to people's energies. Like when people say aura and stuff like that, I can feel a shift in the room. Yeah. People come in and a lot of people can. I am afraid 
to go to the Holocaust Museum, the Trade Center. Yeah. I haven't been. I went. How did it? Go? And it is heavy. It is. It is. That's the best way to describe it. It is heavy. It's dark and it's heavy. Yeah. That, I was that's only alive. there for a little bit. I would imagine you can't. I was exhausting. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I'm afraid of because mm -hmm. the last time I was there was before it fell. It was, a, it was literally a month before. And I shared this on another podcast, but I took it out because I wanted her story to take precedent over my story. But since me and you were friends who were talking about this stuff, I'll leave this in. I think I've told you. I'm sure I have. I had gone to the Trade Center a month before 9-11 with my brother. And I was living in Ohio at the time, but I had to go to a wedding. And then my brother was like, let's go to the city. And we went there and you park on New Jersey side and you take the subway over and it used to go right to the Trade Center. Yeah. And underneath it, it was like a mall type thing. So there was like pizza joints and little stores and stuff like that. Halfway over there, I started feeling nervous and I thought, is it just because we're going to the New York City? I didn't know, but I felt real nervous. And then when we got there, I just remember looking around and being like, I want to soak this all in and looking at people. And you don't look at people in New York City. I don't know if people know no, this. No, you just don't. A, you don't do that. <laughs> it's considered rude. It's like a cultural thing yeah. not to look at people. I was just looking around and the smell of pizza and I just felt nervous is the only way I could describe it. And then over to the right was escalators down because there was a parking garage, I think, down. And it was still taped off. Now, this is obviously 2001. And I thought immediately, I was like, oh, yeah, it had been bombed in 93. Like, I remember it. Like, obviously, if you live in New York, you remember yeah. all that, that happened. So right. I thought maybe that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like that. Maybe I'm feeling that vibe of, like, people that were lost during that time. And we went to Chinatown, and on the way there, I felt fine. I was like, yeah. awesome, walking the streets, we're doing the little markets and all the things. And we had to go back. And as soon as I got to the building, I started feeling nervous again. And my brother was like, do you want to go to the top? And I was like, hell no, I need to get the hell out of here. I can't be in this building anymore. Wow. And I remember driving on a Brit. Well, I wasn't driving, but my brother is driving. And I was so pissed because I had one of those little disposable cameras, but it was in the back seat. And I was like, oh, I really want to take a picture of the skyline. And I didn't because I was like, man, we'll come back. Right. Like you always think. Oh, yeah. We'll always be here. Well, in those 30 days. I started having nightmares of a plane crashing into a building, but in Columbus, Ohio, it was like a gold building. And I was very vocal with my brother, with my roommate at the time, with the people that I worked with. I worked at Lazy Boy. And still to this day, they found me on Facebook and they're like, I will never forget you and 1111 because I kept seeing 1111 everywhere. And I kept, I was talking about it. I was like, I don't know why I'm fucking afraid of flying. I'm not flying anywhere. What the hell? And I was like, I'm just never going to fly again. Have I told you this story? No. Okay. My old boss found me on Facebook. And that was the first thing he said to me when we found each other, like 10, wow. 10, 10 12 years later. He's 11, 11, I'll never forget you. So I had said to my roommate and everyone around me, I'm like, I'm never flying again. I don't know why I'm having such a fear of this. I didn't have a car at the time. And one of my coworkers was picking me up at a White Castle in the morning to take me to Dayton, Ohio, which is like an hour away drive to do, it was called fabric to frame class because I was selling furniture. Okay. And I looked up and it was the most beautiful day and there was like one little plane and I thought, man, it looks so peaceful. Like, why am I so afraid? Oh, it's so beautiful. And on the way there on the radio, it sat a plane hit the trade center and i thought okay maybe that's what it is i was picturing somebody clipping it on accident like a wing hitting it yeah like i and then obviously it all unfolded wow so i i had actually ptsd from that because of everything that had happened before that but i had no one to talk to about it because we were all freaking yeah, pretty, out. yeah all had traumatic thing it was heavy for everybody 
And I started having this fear of eating things, processed foods, and mm-hmm. touching things. And then the, I don't know, they don't talk about this much because that overshadowed. But and within two months or a month and a half, the anthrax stuff was happening. Oh, yeah. And I thought, maybe that's why I'm having yeah. I would like, I don't want anything wrapped or prepared. It's uh, This is so crazy. <laughs> I know it sounds great, but... If I didn't have anybody else that I was like actively talking about this with at that time, I would I would never be able to share this story and believe me. Right. But that led to years of I had panic every time I heard a jet. I had um, severe. I would run to the window and I had to see where the plane was. Like I had major compulsion panic disorder from this. Then I had a kid. That didn't help. <laughs> All of that. Fast forward, I ended up marrying a guy in the military, which I was like, not nah. like I was so <laughs> terrified. And I had to live on base with planes. Like I literally had to, I had to fix whatever was going on in my mind. Right. And I am happy to say in 2019, I did fly. And this year, I flew by myself across the country. I, saw, I was so proud of you. And th- People, when I say, you don't know the history of like why I was terrified, but that's why. That was the time in my life that happened. And it took almost 20 years to have enough counseling and all of the things. Because what happened was I felt like every time I had a feeling that it was going to come true and like, how was I supposed to decipher all this? Like, was I supposed to be a psychic? I had all this chatter in my head. Wow. Which just fed into anxiety and panic and all of that. I'm sure everybody thought I was crazy. <laughs> I mean, as you would. Now I've learned to figure out what is energy and what is anxiety. Um, mm-hmm. I take a lot of practice, a lot of therapy, <laughs> lots of soul searching. Maybe a near death incident. I don't know. That's when I really got rid of the panic. Was the first time in 2019. That's when I flew right after that. Because I was like, oh, I was just almost tortured to death. Plane, not so bad in my mind. But not that I do, knock on wood, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> right. But really like getting through that. But that's why it's so, he- I would imagine it would be exhausting mm-hmm. for me personally going. Yeah. And anyone that lived through that. Obviously, all of our kids, they have no idea. And it makes you think about Pearl Harbor, like oh, yeah. all the people that went through that. And we were just like, it's just a paragraph in a book. Right. right? And yeah. all of history. And that's why when COVID and stuff was happening, I was talking to my kids and I said, this moment right here, this is what changes the world. You're living through it. And mm-hmm. when you have kids, they're not going to understand what the hell you're talking about of what life was before and what life was during and what life was right. after. They said, this is the moment. And I just told my son right now, I said, this is the moment the world's changing right now for the war stuff going on right now. Yeah. This is a moment like you can feel it like life is about to change for everyone in the whole world. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. So that was dark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, thank you for hearing me out. I just hijacked. That's a terrible word. I just totally. <laughs> oh, see, we can laugh about it now. It's not funny, no. but. It still, it still affects me. And I definitely, I still have visceral memories of all of that. And it'll always be like on my heart, everything that went through that and how quickly people forget. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it, it we were talking, I had therapy this morning and we were talking about the school shooting in Walton. And then when she was talking about the truthers about the Sandy Hooks shooting and all that stuff. And it makes me think about the 9-11 truthers, how they say that it never really happened. It just, it really angers me. Like when people say that these things don't happen, I just, I don't get it. I just, I don't know, man. I, maybe I just, I, maybe I'm gullible and I believe everything. I don't know. Maybe I just am. Hold on. What does truthers mean? They don't believe that 9-11 happened. They don't believe that 9-11 was real. They believe that it was an inside job that the government planned oh, it. Okay, so you're talking about different scenarios of why things happen. Yeah. I'm just going to say that I don't fall in anything. In time, the truth always will come out. Yeah. 
That's a tough subject because yeah. it makes you, if you were so gullible, you would believe everything every time somebody, I don't think you're gullible. No. I think that it's very easy to believe the first thing you hear. And then that becomes the truth. And then anything after that seems like a lie. You just have to be very careful of falling into that trap because I could very well go to somebody that's never met you, give them my opinion of you, and that's what's going to stick. That's why rumors are so bad. That's why there's a lot of mistrust in the government right now because a lot of things have come to light that they have been lying or covering up for years and decades. Yeah. And that's why I say I'm not going to feed into all of everything that I ever hear, but I'm also not going to fight for this is the truth and as I know it, right? I can only go right. from my perspective. It's not improbable. It's not impossible. Right, right. It could happen. It could be right. Really doesn't fucking matter. Honestly, like the outcome is still the same. Yeah. Or however it happened or whatever. Just like the whole alien stuff going on right now. Why was that? Why? I, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> That's why that, I'm just saying in yeah. time, the truth will reveal itself. And whatever makes you feel like you can function in the in your world right now, go for it. Yeah. Because whoever is talking in the chatter and all of that, whether it's truth or not, it's not your job to fight for that. Your job is to be okay with yourself. Yeah, exactly. But I think there's a little bit of truth in everything that you hear. Yeah. And I'm glad that you're in therapy about the gun stuff because I know that you have a really... Your gun stuff is was my plane stuff. Yeah. I just had this discussion with a friend of mine earlier this week on Monday, actually, about guns. What's interesting is really zooming out we were both at the school at the same time we both i heard it i was in the floor beneath and i don't associate guns with that thing and you do and i don't know did you know him personally okay so i think maybe that's partially the difference maybe i have no idea right right however my whole adult life even to this day i cannot help but think if I'm in a group of people, is there someone here that's trying to kill somebody? Will I be in the crossfire? I did live in the ghetto. I did hear gunshots every night. I've gone through some shit, right? Yeah. Gangs around me and all of the things. Yeah. Which you would think that I would have more of a, I don't know. Have you ever lived in the ghetto? Close to it, but not in the ghetto. Where were you? Syracuse. That was the first place I got robbed. I'm trying to figure out like something that I can help you digest i hate the fact that you have so much anxiety around guns i'm doing a lot but i actually shot a gun a couple of years ago yeah what kind yeah of i'm can pick up the gun because they have guns here and they'll leave them on the fucking table like it's a goddamn gun shop yeah i mean they're like unloaded and all that shit and they'll leave it laying around like it's a fucking i don't know what the fuck they're doing and I have to pick it up and move it. Like, I can do that. I used to not be able to do that. Like, I'd go to full panic mode. Yeah. But, like, yeah. now I'm able to just pick it up and move it. And I'm a lot better. And Rick had guns. And I was, like, he laid one of his, he called it the door breaker gun. I don't know. It's one of the guns they used in combat. He laid that on top of me because he knew uh, that's the kind of gun that would send me into panic. So that kind of gun, I didn't, I can't handle. But like the handgun, like a rifle gun, but that kind of gun, like that, I don't understand the need for that. But, but who am I? Do you know why? Why he did that? He was crazy. <laughs> yeah, he was. That doesn't happen to normal people. And you just have yeah. a fucking radar and attraction to that's, I mean, that's something you need to discuss in therapy. Oh, yeah. No. The reason why there's gun in America and why we're so much different than everybody else. The Second Amendment. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why? It was because of the back when my uh, British or something. The reason is because, and the why it'll never go away is so we can protect ourselves against the government. Okay. Because if the government can control our firepower when they're corrupt, 
and we can't overthrow them, then all of a sudden we're under a government rule, which we're supposed to be a de- not a democracy. We're supposed to be a republic. So we need to be able to fight back against the government. Makes sense. Start our own militias and do all of the things. And if you take that away from us very quickly and you can see how corrupt it already is, and they're already trying to take away the government, you're not saying there's reasons. I get it. I get the fear and I get thinking that the world is a perfect place. Did you see the interviews of the Ukrainians literally a week before? Okay, so they were interviewing. The news people were over there and they were like, hey, do you think Russia's going to invade you? And they were like, are you going to leave and all of this stuff? And there's, you know, 20 something year olds and whatever. And they're like, Russia's always like talking shit and I'm not going to leave. Like nothing's going to happen. Look at the world we live in right now. Like that's stupid. And then a week later, if you think that shit cannot happen over here just because of the world we're living in and you think everything is so perfect here if it was they thought that too yeah. there's not enough time tell me about your passion for jewelry i like to shine I, they call me extra in my family i like to i'm a princess you can't see it. it's right beside me on my lamp i have a tiara i like like shiny things and pretty things so when i was about 14 we went to woodstock new york I bought a lot of beads and decided I wanted to do make beaded necklaces because that like that hippie vibe was really popular at that time. So I started making beaded necklaces for all my friends and for myself and stuff like that. And I fell off of it for a few years because they weren't popular and because I couldn't see. And but then with recovering from trauma and with my mental illness, my friend suggested to me, you should get into jewelry making. And I thought, that's a great idea because I used to love doing it. And it's because you focus and you don't think about what's bothering you because you're making the jewelry. And so I, I, she sent me some, my friend in Boston that I met in a trauma recovery group. And she sent me some kits and so I started making some jewelry and I gave some to my family and, and then I had all this jewelry and I thought, well, what if I just put some on Facebook just to try to see if anybody wanted some. So if some people wanted some, so I made some more and my mom had her own business. She makes um, quilts and aprons and things like that. And she goes to festivals and fairs and things. And I said, what if I make enough jewelry and I go to these festivals and I set up my own booth? So I did that and it took off from there. And I really I love doing it. I love making the jewelry. I love designing, making fun little designs. I do a lot with crystals, crystal necklaces make beaded bracelets that are the really popular things, the, the beaded necklaces with the words on them or the, the big kind of the glass beads that are really popular. Those are fun to make. I do earrings. I'm not even wearing a pair of my own earrings right now, <laughs> but I do. Halloween earrings were really popular this year. I sold a lot of those and I'm making some Christmas earrings because Christmas is my favorite time of year. And as my all my friends know, and <laughs> getting ready for Christmas. I got a couple of shows left this year and then just getting ready to do some fest special stuff with the business. It's, I just really, it just takes my mind off any kind of trauma or any kind of mental illness kind of stuff. It just focuses on the jewelry and I either listen to a podcast or to some music and just get into the groove of making some jewelry. I When I think of you, I think of jewelry. Like you always are dressed to the nines that like you love fashion you've always had jewelry when you give me a gift it's only like some jewelry or a decoration of some sort and i love you for that i love your new earrings it's thank super you. cool thank you i think you're very talented and making jewelry is that's such a great way so if you can't meditate or if that doesn't feel right to you mm-hmm. This is like a meditation, like a mindfulness thing that you can concentrate. You block out the rest of the world. You're only thinking about what you're doing and what Mm -hmm. that is mindfulness, technically. So that's awesome. I love that you're doing that. Yeah, it takes a lot. It's a lot of focus. And yeah, it's I I usually have my cat boss beside me, the, the, the mean cat. She's and she'll tell me when it's time for break. She'll come walking across my workspace. And I'm like, okay, all right, hands up, I'm done. Or the dogs have come over and they're like, it's time for a break, lady. But yeah, I just 
get my focus in, deep breathing, listening to, like I said, the podcast or the music. And I'm making either crystal necklace or some beading. And I've got some new merchandise I'm putting together. Today I was working on doing some grab bags for the kids for the new shows. Some like putting some different things in grab bags so they can pick up and have little different stuff in them for some fun little different things for oh, the wow. shows. Yeah. Since it's almost Christmas, it's- how can people find your jewelry and find you? I will be on, I'm on Facebook, facebook.com slash creations by Jessica 919. Or by the time this airs, we'll have to face my new website up and that's creations by Jessica 919.com. And that's where all my jewelry is up for sale. And I'll have all my new merch be posted up. I usually post things daily. So try to get stuff up every day, something new, something fun and uh, the older stuff, the newer stuff, everything's all the time. Awesome. Oh, and you're okay. on TikTok too, right? I'm on TikTok. I don't get on TikTok as much because I'm old. Stop it. <laughs> so I'm at Creations by Jessica 919 on all the platforms, TikTok, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and on Pinterest. I'm on the Creations by Jessica 919. Yes, Pinterest. Awesome. Tell me your top three tips. So what really, you have to get creative and anything. I'm a writer, as you mentioned earlier. Just be creative with anything that you do. It's what's most important because if any idea that you have is a good idea, you just got to think of what you can do to make it your own. So the next one I think is do what you love. Because if you're not doing what you love, it's why are you doing it? And then the last is look for advice anywhere. If I had a piece of advice at a show and I took it and I was like, let me try this. Someone suggested making stacking necklaces with the two necklaces on top and they came out really pretty and I love them and, and they seem to be going pretty well. So just look for advice anywhere that you can. And sometimes it's good advice and sometimes maybe it doesn't work out, but hey, just see what you can do. See what you can think of. Yeah. Like experimenting and stuff. Yeah. Those, that's I all I, that. that's experimenting is fun. I love that. You you want to be having fun if you're having a, your own business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. super proud of you i think Thank you're you. doing great and Thank um, you. i've loved all the pieces that you've done so Thank far you. i can't wait to see them in person i have to go visit you <laughs> no. so, is there anything else about ghosts or jewelry that you want to talk about before i that? have ghost earrings ghost jewelry i have these they're, they're so cute they're little i wish i had them out they're little ghosts with Santa hats on. They're so freaking cute. I can't even stand them. I, they have another ones I'm going to order. They have ghosts with Christmas lights wrapped around them. I love them. So they're, they tie into everything. But yeah, I love them. They kind of tie together. But I'm going to also, to go with the ghosts, I'm going to email you my ghost pictures from Gettysburg so that people can take a look at my little ghosties from my Gettysburg adventure. Yes, and send me pictures of the jewelry too, like the yeah, put those up on screen too. Absolutely, That's super cool. I love so. you. I'm a stalker. This is not. I'm really at your house. Yes, <laughs> you're in the car out front. Are Don't you look. my Wi-Fi? Too. <laughs> I got the password. That's funny. Number one, what was your first job? My grandparents had an ice cream truck and child labor. They had us work for them, and I either worked at the ice cream truck or I watched their dogs. Nice. And what's your favorite fashion trend ever? Bell bottoms. Real? Yeah. I like the, because I'm tall, I have to wear long. Like I have to make sure they're tall pants because as women's pants don't come in like lengths, you have to get like whatever tall. Right. So I have to wear mm-hmm. the tall pants that I love bell bottoms because they, I, I think they make your legs look longer. Yeah. All right. I, love I loved it in the 90s. Mm-hmm. It's forever to get on the train, but then I did. <laughs> yeah. What is your biggest pet peeve? And it sucks because I was late today, but people being late. But I was late because my Zoom was doing updates and it took forever. Yeah. I don't mind. (laughs) I'd wait for you forever. (laughs) What's one thing you want to do this year? The year's almost over, but I'm going to count next year. I want to, Adam wants to do another vacation to another Civil War site. So we're going to find, pick one. It looks like it's going to be Antietam. So we're probably going to go to Antietam. Stop in D.C. on the way. Yeah. What are three things on your bucket list? I would like to travel to, 
Ireland. My family, supposedly there's a castle in my family in Ireland somewhere. So I'd love to see the family homestead. I'm going to take my son to his first concert where we've decided it's going to be Blink-182 because I saw them in 1999. And he likes Blink-182. And we're going to go see them in July. And then, let's see, just really, it's it's all travel for me. Just more yeah, traveling. Okay. Yeah. I, I would love to see all 50 states. That's a good one. How many siblings do you have? Just one, my sister. She's younger, but I always tell people I'm the younger, nicer, prettier one. What is your favorite candy or snack? Right now, I'm really into like gummy fruity flavors. So like Starburst kind of thing. I used to love Reese's, but I've lost my taste for them. Just they change stuff over the years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is your Zodiac sign? I'm a Sagittarius, but I don't really put a lot of it. I don't know anything about it. You know, I never even realized that. Really? Now you know. I never even thought about that because I always, I'm always like, I don't know any Sagittarius is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. I just realized we've never talked about it. That's so funny. Okay. Do you know mine, right? No. Because I don't know anything about the signs. Oh, I'm a Gemini. <laughs> oh, okay. So now I know three Geminis. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> What's your most favorite thing about yourself? I'm funny. That's true. They're That's hilarious. I concur. What's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Best piece of advice I've ever gotten. Don't say stack necklaces. No. Leave that job. Leave that job. Yeah. yeah it was a toxic job. It was time to go. Was I one of those people? I think that you encouraged me. You, I think that I was talking to you, but it was the day of, and I texted my mom and dad and my sister and my boyfriend that I had at the time, and they all were like, just quit. It's time to go. And I was like, peace out. Thank you so much for playing this game. I love you. And oh how my gosh. can you not? I feel like I want to have you on every few months just because there's I know there's so many other stories like we could talk about trauma we could talk about relationships we could talk about travel like there's so much you are such a dynamic person with so much history and so much strength that you don't even realize I think you're super humble and we have so many stories when you were talking about being in the woods and you thought it was a bear I immediately thought of your dad <laughs> thinking about that last night real quick just tell a little bit of that story oh my god so we were I think we were probably 16 17 years old because I had driven to my grandmother's house and she lived uh, with the parking area was up on a little hill and her house was down and he, I'm motioning with my hands because it's a visual medium. Podcasting is. Well, it also, and it's on a dirt road. Okay. It's on a dirt road in the mountains of upstate New York. And we were, and, and it was in dark because it, it was, it probably was in the fall because there's leaves on the ground. Yeah. And we got to go visit my grandmother and we walked out and we're walking to the grandma's house. And there's like a rustling and a growl in the leaves. And Tia grabs my hand. Tia is much smaller than I am. And she like carries me and runs to my grandmother's house. I'm like, Tia, it's my dad. It's my dad. <laughs> okay. Well, to add to that, I'm 5'4 and you are 6'1. Six, 6'1. Six foot. Six foot. I'm 5'4. You know, I'd save you too. <laughs> Directing you. But I don't think my feet hit the ground. You really carried me. I was like, it's my dad. It's my dad. It's my dad. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me. Oh, he, he really got you. Yeah, I thought it was a bear. There, it's a bear country. It's not it country. heard of. I thought of rabies and bear. That's what <laughs> I was thinking of. Then we needed to get the hell to the house. <laughs> and we right. did. We we made it in record time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I definitely, I cried as soon as I knew it was your dad. I was so relieved and so embarrassed <laughs> and so full of adrenaline, for sure. Oh, he's such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, oh my gosh, that's like the running joke for my whole adult life. <laughs> Ever since then, <laughs> your dad and the bear story. Oh my gosh. At least I was like a hero. I just, you were. You saved me. For real. At least I know because I would have shoved you at that bear and I would have run. Like you could have been that bear snack and I would have been like, eat her. Seriously, you are an amazing person and I am so lucky and privileged to call you my best friend forever I we have you. so many memories together <laughs> oh my gosh I definitely want to have you back I hope that people are entertained <laughs> I don't know I don't know I never We've know. been entertained <laughs> I'm I'm entertained um it's it's funny because 
since I know you so well, this has been a crazy interview trying to do because we keep having side conversations that all of you are not hearing because I'm going to edit them out. <laughs> but it's like side trails for days. But I just love you. So I have I two final you. questions for you. Tell me what legacy means to you and how does it play a role in your life? Is and how I'll be remembered. I would want to be remembered as a good mom, a good friend, somebody who loved hard, loved big. And that's really what's important to me is that people know that I love them. And I love my son. I love my friends. I love my family. I love my Tia. I love you. Okay. How are you marking this time in your life? Oh, my goodness. I take pictures all the time. I have taken ever every therapist I've ever had in my life has said journal. And I've never been good at it, but I am really good at it now. And I'm journaling everything every day. I've started a gratitude journal where I'm doing the gratitudes. I am I am this and I'm grateful for this. So I'm, I'm journaling. I'm, yeah, that's, those are the things that are really important to me that it's happening every single day. And that's, it's important. Oh, I love that. And you are such a great writer. You are amazing. We didn't really touch on that too much. Maybe the next time we'll chat. Yeah. And just thank you. Thank you so much for showing up on time. I mean, thanks for having me. I, I, I truly love you. So. I love you. And I wish nothing but success for you, my friend. Thank you. This was really fun. Was it? It was. I put makeup on for you, so I'm glad I did that. You're beautiful all the time. Thank you. Extra. Is that where the extra in the paper? Extra. extra. That's right. Next time we'll have a tiara so that people can really know. I mean, for real, yes. (laughs) One of them, because I have a couple. Oh, sure. All right. I love you. I love you. Thank you so much for listening to this amazing podcast episode, this special that me and my best friend did. She has been a friend of mine my entire life, and I love her dearly. She also is the winner of a special contest I did for my podcast promotion. So she doesn't know this until she listens to this, but I will be sending her a gift card. Thank you so much for listening to all these crazy stories that we share and let me know if you want to hear her back on the show. Everyone have a great holiday week. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Empowering Time Markers. We hope you found inspiration, gained valuable insights, and connected with our incredible guests. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us continue to bring you empowering content. And remember, the journey doesn't end here. Stay connected with us on social media, where we'll be sharing additional resources, behind-the-scenes content, and updates on upcoming episodes. Thank you for joining us on this empowering journey. Together, let's continue to make our mark on the world one moment at a time. Until then, keep empowering yourself and others. This is Tia Bottom, signing off from Empowering Time Markers.